everyone, and welcome back to Wonder of Faith. As always, I'm Anthony Bush, and today we're going to keep going talking about the Wondrous Orders. So we've been talking about the section of the Orders that's called the Order to Doctrine. And now we're going to wrap that up by coming back to yet another premier doctrine. So when we talk about premier doctrine, this means that of the things we've talked about, we're now going to kind of put them all together and use them to accomplish a greater goal. And today we have a very important uh, topic to talk about, and that's talking about conversion of other people. So I kind of hinted before that in order to be a Catholic and a Christian, that it's not enough to live it, but we have to be an example for others. And that means showing others how to live rightly, uh, how to find truth, and how to live for truth. And then also be able to tell them truth so that they can understand it for themselves. And so today we're going to focus on this topic of converting others and being there for others. Uh, so we can, we can do it better and uh, be better Christians and uh, bring others to the table of truth, to the table of faith. Uh, that we know and love. So, uh, let's start out. The premier doctrine for the conversion of souls. The life of doctrine is guaranteed in the spreading of the gospel message to the world. For those who do not yet believe are waiting for someone in faith to show them truth. It is our duty to be that person and start the journey for them and with them. Uh, so, uh, as I said before, Someone has to do it. If we always say that uh, that's someone else's job, if everyone were to say that, then no one would be converted. No one would be shown the good of God and the good of the faith. And so we have to be the one. We can't wait for someone else to do it, but we have to take initiative and have the uh, spirit and the passion needed to go forward with that. And so with this in mind, we start with number one. Seek out those who need help to discover the faith. So it's good to always keep an eye out. So uh, it's good to have friends that um, are faithful to the church, love the church, understand her. Uh, but we have to be able to get out the comfort zone and find those who aren't so uh, necessarily educated by the church or appreciate the church and show them and teach them uh, what we see to give them our perspective. Because by doing that, we are giving them an invitation. We're giving them a path forward to reach uh, our goal and God's goal um, and their goal, even though they don't know it, of becoming part of the church. And not just in name, but also in spirit, as a practicing member of the church, as one who loves her and understands her and wants what's best for her. And so we have to seek those people out and not just uh, slam the Bible in their face or to just uh, give them a brochure, but to be friends with them, to understand them, to try to uh, be there for them. And through that example, as well as through uh, speaking of truth, get them to where they need to be. Number two, answer all questions one asks about the faith in order to inspire the search for truth. So if someone is curious or maybe starting uh, that transition into conversion, we can't stifle it. We shouldn't be uh, burdened by their questions and by their inquiries because it's through questioning they come to understand the faith. And so we have to be uh, always vigilant and able to answer their questions, um, regardless if we feel like it or not, because we're not true friends if we're dismissing their questions and their inquiries. Um, and we're not a true Catholic if we're stifling the conversion of another person. Number three, help those who do not know the joy of life, but live only in sadness and darkness. So, um... Joy is a big part of conversion, for sure. If we go around acting like uh, we run the world or acting like uh, we know better than everyone else, then we're not going to get anywhere. But if we're joyful about it, if we show them what good that the faith gives us by letting it uh, illuminate within us, then we can uh, give them uh, that path forward as well by just being with them and showing them our character and our soul. Um, instead of hiding it away or trying to be a certain way. So if we're living as humans should in joy, in liveliness, but in good, then we have a better chance of sparking conversion. Number four, be patient with those who do not see the truth right away. Instead, work with them and be there for them. You know, no matter what you do, if you speak to them on faith, you're changing them in some way, shape, or form, even if you can't perceive it right away. But to 
continue to put in effort and uh, be a friend to them. You're getting them into a place at least that allows them to convert down the road. And it couldn't just be you that's helping. Maybe they're having other people in their life that's helping them as well. And so we never know the full story when it comes to this. So we have to try our best and hope and pray to God that uh, it's making a difference because he has the power to bring them into the church. Uh, of course, this includes or has to have their will as a part of it. God's not going to force anyone into the church. But by giving them what they need, their will can be turned toward the better. And perhaps by the grace of God, they will get where they need to be and become a, a full communicant into the church of God, the Catholic Church. Number five, in the face of atheism, be attentive but friendly. So trying to bring other Christians to the church and trying to bring atheists into the church are two very different things. Because from the Christian standpoint, they believe in Jesus. Uh, they, they know the Bible. They understand uh, the basic foundations of the Christian faith. But it's the little key theological concepts that have to be tweaked um, to bring them into the Catholic Church. With atheists, we're starting from the very beginning. We have to first show them that there is a divine creator uh, who loves us very much out there. And that can be difficult because usually atheists uh, depend very heavily on the senses. Without uh, experience um, that it can be proven or can be given evidence like the scientific method, then it's very hard to get them in line. But it is still possible, absolutely. Uh, I think looking at St. Thomas Aquinas' arguments for the existence of God are a great place to start. Uh, the Catholic Church, in talking about its logical tradition, is very good. And slowly but surely, they can come into line. Uh, also, there are religious people who are not Christians. So we have the Jews, the, um, the Muslims, the Hindus, and all other faiths. At least these people have an understanding of a mystical understanding of life, that there is something there uh, that gives us life and allows us to go on. And the Islamic faith and the Jews uh, are closer in line with Christianity because they believe in a uh, one God and as creator of everything. And so uh, from that point, you can stem a conversation and a discussion to get them in line with truth. But um, Eastern religions are difficult because they believe in a mystical uh existence of life in the world, but it's not the same. Um, there is no belief in, let's say, one God, but many beings or uh, many spirits who are all one or have this oneness to them, and we're all part of this oneness. And It's very complicated. It's very um, uh, abstract. Um, but just, I'm sure out there, there has to be theology and theologians who have talked about how to stem the gap between uh, non-Western um, faiths uh, and the Catholic Church and the Christian faith as in general. Number six, in the face of anti-theism, defend the faith and attempt to use reason to unseat the hate of God. So I uh, mark a difference between atheism and anti-theism. Atheism is simply a belief that there is no God out there, that there is not one being that created all things, and that uh, we live and die as part of a natural cycle then anti-theism is the same, but there is a hostility toward theistic thinkers or theistic thought in general. And usually these people uh, are very hard to reason with because they want so badly to deride the church uh, and make fun of faith in general. And so the best we can do is defend the faith, uh, be a witness to truth and to the reason and logic that the church holds, but at the same time, don't entertain their uh, insults. You know, if you find you're not going to get anywhere with them, then it's time to move on, because there's a hatred there of of the Catholic faith or the theistic tradition that uh, is blocking the ability to evangelize. And so we have to hope that God um, softens the heart of this person. Um, because there must have been some event in their life or some experience that, that brought them to this point. And so maybe we can try to find out if they're willing, but uh, in the end, we can't 
spend our time trying to fix a problem that is at, the, at least at the time unfixable. And so we have to move on from that, especially if they're being hostile towards you or being insulting of your dignity. That's unacceptable. Number seven, be ever supportive of those in the rite of Christian initiation. So in the church, we have RCIA and RCIC, which is the right of Christian initiation for adults and the right of Christian initiation for children. And these people are in the process of becoming Catholic. And it must be so difficult uh, at this point. I was raised Catholic since I was born. But for those coming into the church, it must be difficult to understand the theological ideas of the faith for the first time and try to get a wrap around it. But there is something there that's pulling them toward it, and hopefully it's a understanding and love of the faith. Um, some of the best Catholics out there are converts because they wanted to be Catholic. They chose from some other religious position to become Catholic. And so their stories are beautiful to listen to, and I suggest you do for self-inspiration, uh, especially in your journey to evangelize. So it's always important that we remember those in the process of becoming Catholic because it's a major step for them. We know how big spiritually it is, a big deal to become baptized and become one with the church for the first time. And so always be supportive of them, uh, be friendly with them and wish them good and pray for them because uh, with that they will become our fellow brothers and sisters in Christ at the sacramental altar and we can count on them to be us uh, in solidarity with us in faith. Number eight, pray especially for those who do not know Christ spiritually or rationally. So there are people out there who may have heard the name Jesus, but they just have never been exposed to the Bible or salvation history. There are parts of the world where Christianity has not uh, reached there in full. So we have to uh, keep them in our prayers because they have not been given the choice to accept uh, the faith. Uh, the gospel, the baptismal call. And so remember them always, and hopefully one day that they will find God and will find uh, faith in Christ. Number nine, when dealing with non-Catholic Christians, be respectful but defend the church if necessary. So trying to be uh, combative with other Christians is not going to get anywhere. We can um, discuss with them the differences, and that's always helpful. But that's the best we can do. We can't call them out or insult them because that's not going to do anything. And as uh, Christians in general, that's not what we're called to do. And so uh, if you find yourself being a friend or in a friendly uh, conversation with other Christians, don't be afraid to bring the faith up, to disagree. That's part of life. That's part of being a, a person in general. You're going to disagree with someone. But hopefully in that disagreement, you can come to understand them better and they can come to understand the faith better. And of course, hopefully, uh, come to uh, be baptized and part of the church as a whole. So never pass on those opportunities. And number 10, be thankful and reflect on the gifts of Catholicism frequently to empower the ability to help non-Catholics. So as we're evangelizing and bringing the church and faith to other people, this is the perfect time to reflect on how gifted we are to have the faith with us here and now, to be able to receive the sacraments and to be joyful and understanding of the gospel as the church uh, teaches it to us and, and holds us close. It's a magnificent thing. And hopefully in the experiences we have with other people, we can forever grow in gratitude and uh, just in awe of the faith that we have, the Catholic Church that's there for us always. Because it really is magnificent that uh, we who are born or have converted have a, been allowed to enter this faith and be a part of it here on earth, uh, while uh, others may be a part of it in heaven. So always be excited about your faith, because it's a very, very valuable thing to have, um, especially when you look at those who don't have it. So always be thankful to God for the gifts you have, the church that you have, uh, and let it just go every day. And that's uh, the main message for this video, to ponder the mysteries of the faith and find the gratitude for the church as a whole. So this will end the video for today. This is episode 10. We're already 10 videos in. That's uh, 10 weeks so far, plus the first two intros. So I've been at this for 12 weeks. It seems like it's going so fast. As always, leave a comment if you have a question. 
uh, and I'll see you next week. And uh, just a little look. Here's the wondrous orders for those who don't know. Um, a book I wrote. Um, I don't think it's anything new or special, but it does create a, a centralized document that talks about being faithful to God, faithful to the church, and just confronting things in life. So I'll have the Amazon link to this book, $16 below. And I will see you all next week. May God be uh, with you and may you be blessed by him. Bye-bye.